Here's why the Phoenix Suns are ready to dominate this NBA season. They have the perfect combination of star power and depth, which has given them the second best record in the league so far. You're about to find out that it's not only the signings of CP3 and Crowder that are making the Suns better, but the shocking internal development from Mikael Bridges and Cameron Johnson. Stay tuned to see everything making this 2021 Suns team insane and whether or not they're legit contenders. My name's Adam, welcome to D-Flow Hoops. If this is your first time here and you're a basketball fan looking for all kinds of intriguing NBA content, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified every time I post content. We're about to hit 40K, so it'd be greatly appreciated. With the OKC Thunder, Chris Paul was one of the clutchest players in the league last season as he led the league in points within the last five minutes of the game. Then CP3 showed up in the playoffs, leading OKC to a close Game 7 loss against the Houston Rockets, where he looked like the prime, all-NBA version of himself. Fast forward to November 16th, and Paul was traded for Ricky Rubio, Kelly Oubre Jr., two other players, plus a first-round pick. And now the Suns have a top-five point guard in the NBA. And for an elite 24-year-old shot creator in Devin Booker and Phoenix's young talent in general, which I'm about to break down for you, the addition of a 10-time All-Star, 9-time All-NBA player, and one of the best leaders in the league has predictably been an absolute blessing. Because Chris Paul just takes all the pressure off Devin Booker, and the two have already built up some great chemistry less than 10 games in. CP3's all-time great, naturally gifted playmaking makes a winning atmosphere sustainable for himself and his teammates. Maybe D-Book could be dropping 30 points and putting the team on his shoulders like he did in the bubble, but the longevity of a 72-game season would inevitably kick in. Paul's crafty scoring with his ability to dominate the pick and roll provides an overwhelming threat next to a rising superstar in Booker. An overlooked factor in the Suns' success so far is the maturity and development of two players on the wing who are valuable on both ends of the floor. Firstly, Mikhail Bridges has proved in the 2021 season that he's going to be one of the better 3 and D players in this league for the next decade. He's making nearly half of his attempts from three-point range and has already locked up two superstars in Luka Doncic and Donovan Mitchell. Mikhail's 7-1 wingspan and relentless activity have led him to average the fourth most amount of blocks in the league among small forwards so far. He's great at fighting through screens and never gives up on a play. He's an elite passing lane defender, as in his first two seasons, Bridges finished in the top 10 in NBA total deflections. His rookie season, he finished 7th in deflections with 223, and last year he wound up 9th with 203. You can expect Bridges to make an all-NBA defensive team this year, but don't forget about his offense, as his efficiency has been exceptional. Mikhail joining the 50-40-90 club, as crazy as that seems, isn't out of the picture with how smooth his game's looking. Secondly, we've got to talk about the 11th pick from the 2019 NBA Draft, Cam Johnson, who's developed a complete offensive repertoire in his second season. Cam thrives as a spot-up three-point shooter, but can also pull up when defenders run him off the line and attack the paint off the bounce. He needs to improve his pure shot creating to become elite and take the all-star step, but for now, his game is perfectly suited for the Suns' offensive system because Devin and Chris can manufacture shots the majority of the time under pressure, but when you have a deadly shooter like Johnson who can pull up for shots like this at the end of the shot clock, it helps. Here comes the double. Booker gives it up. Timers at two. Cam Johnson has to let it fly, and he beats the shot clock with a long deuce. Coaches are going to be trapping the Suns' two superstars all season long and make anyone other than CP3 or D-Book beat him. Cameron should get a ton of open looks because of that, so expect the former North Carolina Tar Heel to have a stellar season. As the years progress, though, Cam's offensive bag is only going to get more and more deep, so I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few years we see him reach all-star caliber. Coming up later on, you'll see if Phoenix is a 2021 title contender, but first, I've got to discuss the Suns' other big addition this offseason in Jay Crowder. In the current era of the NBA, versatility is king. When it comes to strictly the athletic build of a player, if they're too small or slow to have a positional versatility as a defender, they have to be damn good guarding their own position to not be considered limited, or even worse, a liability. The Suns haven't had a wing defender like Jay Crowder since they had P.J. Tucker back in 2017, 
but about four years after they traded Tucker to Toronto, Phoenix has a roster that can compete for a top seed in the Western Conference with the addition of a man who was an integral piece of the 2020 East champions. Jay's clamps both in ISO situations and in the pick and roll are an extremely valuable piece for any team he plays for. His grown man muscle can get in the way of bigger forwards around the league, and Crowder significantly helps when you're in switch defense and he has to defend a center. That versatility and his size helps out big time on the glass and adds a ton of physicality and toughness for the Suns. Given he had 16 games in 2020's playoffs where he scored in double figures while guarding every team's best player on the other end, Crowder undoubtedly has the resume to bring those positives. At 30 years of age, Jay's in the prime of his basketball career, but he has a ton of experience under his belt. DeAndre Ayton hasn't put up the typical production that you'd expect from the top pick in the draft. And while Phoenix could have had Luka Doncic, Ayton's combination of overwhelming size and polished finishing down low maybe fits even better than Doncic would with the Suns offense and adds yet another scoring weapon for this dynamic and impressively built Suns team. I love the balance of this Phoenix roster, and it's all topped off by a dominating post threat. After 2018's number one pick had a rookie year that saw him put up a very solid 16 points and 10 boards in 71 games, DeAndre faced major turbulence in his sophomore campaign. Ayton was suspended for 25 games after testing positive for a performance-enhancing substance to begin 2019-20. Additionally, DeAndre missed time with two ankle injuries, and he ended up missing over half of a season in which the Suns came up half a win short of reaching the playoffs. Ayton gives the Suns perimeter weapons a guy who they can throw it in the post to and trust to get buckets. His post fades getting more and more lethal. We can't forget he's still 22 years of age like myself. But the Suns already have a beastly presence with DeAndre Ayton manning the paint in his third year. Next up, I'll show you if I think the Suns can legitimately compete with the top threats in the West. But first, a quick Devin Booker breakdown. Most recently, we saw the chef drop 62 points. But you can't forget about the most dominant scoring display in recent NBA history. And that's D-Book dropping a 70-piece at the Boston Garden. I know his numbers haven't been like they were in the bubble so far this season as the 30 point averages in those eight games have went down to 21 in these games, but Booker's put up over 22 points per game in every year since 2016-17. He's not about putting up empty stats anymore. The man's desperate to win. And the IQ he's going about his business with reflects that. When he could be forcing things to get his point total up, Booker's brilliantly played off his teammates and truly showed He's a team player, and like his partner in the backcourt, Chris Paul, one of the better leaders in the NBA. So how good are these Suns, and can they compete with the best teams in the West? With every core piece you just saw broken down, surrounded by some role players who can shoot threes in Dario Saric, Cameron Payne, and Langston Galloway, there's some solid depth already in place. And while I think the Suns could use one more guard off their bench, their shot creation and defense is already at an elite level. They have some supreme leadership from their top players all the way through to their coaching staff, so I don't see why this Suns team can't make a deep run in 2021's playoffs. I think they have a real shot to make the conference finals, but I can't wait to see Devin Booker's playoff debut. The man's a first-class offensive machine, and he finally has every piece in place around him to win. But I want to know your exact prediction for the 2021 Suns' success in the comments section. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Links in the description. You're the best for sticking around. This was dflow, and I'll see you next video.